Hey trainers, Pope Dad here along with me is KK Shiv128. And today we're going to bring you a look at Forbidden Light Translations scans for the new set coming out. And we're just going to, we're not going to cover every single car, but we're definitely going to highlight a few that uh, we think have potential moving forward. And so let's dive into it. And right from the beginning, I want to talk about the new Alolan Executor. Thanks. And for one grass, Tropical Shake, 20 plus damage, and it does 20 more for each type of basic energy card in your discard pile, up to 5. Now, I think this card has potential. It's got a nice 160 health, which is super good right now, because there's a lot of decks that can hit 150, not too many that hit 160, and it being just a one prize, it can definitely two shot your opponent's Pokemon. My only concern is getting five different types of energy in your discard pile. Yeah. And we're going to talk about a few different ways that you can do it. Like, you know, there's of course Ultra Ball, there's Battle Compressor in the expanded format, there's um, the new uh, Mystery Treasure. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's ways to get the energy in the discard pile. I just sycamore, sycamore. I I think it has potential. What what do you kind of think? I think it's okay. The HP is great, and I mean, if you can get the five energies up in the discard pile, then yeah, I think it's good. But trying to do that, it's gonna be hard. Well. You know, you got to think um, the damage output is there once you add in the Lorantis promo choice band. So, I mean, the, the damage could be there. It could rack up pretty quick. So, I and kind of an off the wall deck, I think it could pair up with the old Ho Ho that has the rebirth where you can play. Battle Compressor and dump some basic energies in there and rebirth them back out. If for some reason you fail the uh, to hit heads on the coin flip, then you just go in hard with Executor. Yep. So, I definitely think it has potential. Like the HP 160 on a Stage 1. Yeah, that's great. That's, I, I think it has a lot of potential. Moving on to... Alolan Marowak. Now, I think this is really good. And I could be by myself on this one, but for a free attack cost, search your deck for two basic energy cards and attach them in any way you like. For colorless, colorless, 20 times damage, it does 20 times the number of Pokemon you have in play with its name. With Alolan in its name. And immediately, I am thinking nine tails all the way. You're playing the Alolan Vulpix, DCE. You're already playing DCE. You can grab two waters. I mean, if you have a full bench of five Alolans, and then him in the active, that's six. So you're doing 120 choice band, 150 again. It's just a stage one. The health could be better. It'd be nice to see a 130, but 120, not too shabby. Definitely could be worse. Uh, it could be 30. I think it's a good non GX, non EX attacker. You know, giving up one prize and you've got a solid damage output. And it pairs super nice with Ninetales. You know, you, you go in with your Marowak, and then you could always snipe for the 50 with nine tails, and take some pretty good knockouts, I think. What What is uh, your feelings on? I think if you have, like, a bunch of Gillespie just running around, then I think it's a good counter to it. Just have it in the deck. Absolutely, it one shots the Gillespie, it has nine tails. Yeah, nine tails is weak to metal, but you know what? Metal's weak to fire. So I think a Marowak Nine Tails could be pretty spicy. Yeah. All right, next. Next, let's uh let's look at this Delphox. Um it it's 
kind of interesting. i am got mixed feelings about him on the fence. Once during your turn, you may leave your opponent's active Pokemon burned. So, 20 damage right off the bat with the burn. Fire, fire, DCE, 150, discard 2 energy from this Pokemon. Not too good, but... It definitely has one shot potential. Again, the HP 150. It'd be nice to hit 160. We've already seen how crucial the 160 is in decks like Empoleon versus the Garchomp. It just feels like you lose your Garchomp super quick with the 150 or even a Gallade. Uh, it having 150, it just seems like it goes down to a lot of things that are able to hit the 150. But not a lot of things are able to hit the 160. They can, but it seems like they struggle a little bit. So it'd be nice to have 10 more HP. The attack, 150. Choice band, plus the burn. You're hitting 200, so I mean, you're just 10 short of that magic 210 number that we're looking to hit in all these decks. So I'm on the fence. I don't like discarding to fire energy. But we've already seen decks like Nitro Tank with Turtonator that are able, fairly good. You can Kiaway. Uh, on the fence, what do you think? I don't think it's that good just because it's not able to hit the 210 against the Zorks. And it gets one shot pretty easily for stage 2. Completely agree. So I don't know if there's enough value with Del Fox, but... Maybe something we have to explore later. Uh, interesting card, Pyroar. Again, this is another one I'm on the fence with. Whenever your opponent plays an item or card or supporter card, prevent all effects of that card. So, <coughs> no Guzma, no no shenanigans like that, no gusting, no, you know, it, it just, for a fire, DCE, 80 damage, uh, if Lysander Labs is in play, it does 60 more. Lysander pre prevents any uh, uh, tools from having any sort of functionality. It eliminates their ability to choice ban and etc. But you know, you're not really caring too much about choice ban since you're a non GX. You only have 120 health. Which is concerning. Uh, your maximum damage output is just 140. You're a well, fire Pokemon, so you're hitting Glissopod. Lorantis. Yeah, you could boost it with Lorantis promo. You might as well just do the exit you I just... I don't think there's enough upside to explore at this time. I don't think it's that good. Okay. Moving along, we've got a new Froakie. Uh, if it has water energy... Retreat cross to zero. It's got 50 HP. Not too concerning. Buzzwall's still having to two shot it, unless we uh, run Diancy and 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 uh, strong energy. So or the new beast energy. Beast energy, Diancy, strong. So I think you still play the 60 with bubble. You have a 70 HP. Now, this is a little bit better. Do, do you think this one replaces uh, the 60 HP with Bubble? I think it may. I think it might, too. The 70, we've seen Piplup with 70 work wonders against the Buzzwall decks. But, man, the Buzzwall, they're gaining so much from this new set. Uh, I don't even know if the 70 kind of... Puts it ahead. It might still have be better to have that option of paralyze. I think you're just gonna still struggle. I, I think testing is a must to see if the 60 HP Froki versus the 70, which one has more value. Frogadier, the interesting Frogadier or Golbat, huh? Place two damage counters when you evolve it from your hand. To one of your opponent's Pokemon. So we can either play duplicates or we can play this Frogadier that's basically Golbat. And it doesn't even have 
as good of an attack as Golbat that did the spread damage all over the Pokemon. It just for one water does 20 damage. Do you see any viability with, uh, with, uh, like a bat deck, like the old Toad Bats? Is Greninja going to be the new bat thing? No. Most of the bats are still standard legal, and we don't see. Two out of the three. Yeah, it doesn't have the good free retreat Zubat, but it does have a Zubat with 50 HP, I believe. And and the bats aren't seeing play. It's just the damage. You know, yeah, it's two damage, but wouldn't you rather just Tapu Coco and damage spread on everything? Wouldn't that be better? Yeah. So I think I think you still play the old Frogadier with duplicates. Yes. I'm not a huge fan of Greninja decks, so I'm not the uh sale when it comes to Greninja. I do not like the deck at all. But there's people that do, so hey, I would still play the other Frogadier that plays water duplicates, right? Greninja GX. Hmm. You think maybe this is a one of you can put Three damage counters on one of your po opponent's Pokemon when you evolve. For water DCE, you do 110 and you can shuffle it back into your deck. For water DCE, your GX attack does 130 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. I, I'm not against I'm like a one of. Kind of like the water shuriken one that we used to have that did 30 and flash fire. Yeah. I got rotated out, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, I don't think this is too terribly bad. I like the 230. That's definitely super, super good. Something that the breaks, you know, with only 170. Um, maybe, a, maybe a one, maybe a two of, you know? Yeah. So, Greninja players, you'll have to figure it out, but... We're not the Greninja experts. We are definitely not the Greninja experts, but... I can definitely see a one, maybe even a two of, going into the deck. Moving right along, we have... Volcano Prison Star. Okay, Volcano, you Greninja players out there, y'all should be loving this new card. Ability Jet Geyser. Once during your turn, you may discard a water energy from your hand. If you do, your opponent switches their active with one of their benched. The Greninja decks already weren't playing a lot of uh, Guzmas or anything like that, or gusting effects, maybe a counter catcher here and there, but for the most part, most decks aren't playing it. This perfect one of, I definitely like this card a lot. I think it's good. I think it is really good. The attack, I like the I like the attack too for three waters, sauna bomb, hundred damage. It does 20 to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. I think it's good. I think it I think it cleans up a lot of things. If you've uh, done a couple water shurikens and you just need that last 20 damage, this is your attack. And that HP is that's pretty good. HP 160, perfect like we talked about. We really like the 160 health. Um, and it's basic. The, the Greninja decks are already playing uh, Star Beacon ability with uh, Starmie. So, discarding a water... Space Beacon, excuse me. So, discarding a water and pulling up something on the bench sounds pretty good. And then getting it back and then being able to water shuriken or attach water. I, I really like this card a lot. Yeah, I definitely think it's good. and I think Greninja players should be happy about this card. Absolutely, absolutely. Not enough good things to say about the Volcanion. Super good, I think. Next we have... Malamar. Inke and Malamar. You know, at the end of the segment, we'll kind of give our opinion on what we think are the one or two best cards. This is definitely one of one of the uh, cards that are up there at the very, very top. Mm -hmm. Ink, we'll start off with Inke. Basic 60 HP. Hypnosis, your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Not the worst. Guaranteed sleep. It's so 50-50. Hitting for 10 damage or something. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, the only thing I can think of better would be a Paralyze instead yeah. of sleep. But 
You'd probably have to flip a coin to get paralysis. So, definitely like the NK Malamar. Here he is. Ability Psycho Re Recharge. Once during your turn, you may attach a psychic energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. The attack Psychic Psychic Colorless Psy Missile 60 damage. We probably won't be using Psy Missile ever unless you're in a completely bad way. At that point, you've probably just lost. So, the ability, absolutely amazing. The energy acceleration that every Psychic deck was needing. You have all these good Psychic cards that have three, possibly four, straight Psychic attacks. Well, you know what? You have the answer right here. 90 HP, the same as uh, Electric and Bronzong. Nothing crazy there. Do you think you would you would rather have it have three retreat costs to heavy ball for it, or do you think two would just be fine? It would be nice to have the three retreat cost, but you know what? We have the new mystery treasure. Getting this guy into play is not gonna be an issue. Four Ultra Ball, three mystery treasure. We're getting him on turn two. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We are turn wanting Bridget. We're grabbing our Ultra Beast Necrozma. We're grabbing two Inkes. And next turn, we're going to have two Malamars. And we are going to be swinging for huge one hit knockouts with Ultra Beast Necrozma. This card, super, super good. It's, it's up there for me. I think maybe it and the Necrozma could be my top two. We'll just have to see a little later. I agree. It's also great that since Buzzwall is coming back with all these new hipster cards that are super good, bringing the Psychic, making it more powerful, is going to it's gonna kind of even out. Even the playing field. Yeah. Yes. Um, just thinking, going to dwell on it here for a sec. Think about all the good Psychic attackers. The Mewtwo GX that's Pretty much a laughable card. Three psychics to do 200, 200 damage or its other attack that does, what, 60 and heal 30. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even it, you know, and then the first attack does 30 for each psychic energy. Malamar is going to be so useful in all these decks. Necrozma GX, three colorless, and discard a psychic to do 60 more. I, your damage output is going to be crazy. I can see three or four different types of decks kind of branching out because of Malamar. I could see a Mewtwo GX deck. I could see a Lunala Necrozma deck. I can definitely see an Ultra Beast Necrozma deck. I think that one is probably going to be the best. And you have Garatina for four Psychic. Does 160. Lunala... Lunala that for four it does 20 times all the energy in play So many options with Malamar can't say enough good things about it. Definitely keep your eye on Dragalja, let's quickly come over this uh, Ability poison barb. It's the same as the uh, the tool poison barb if your uh, opponent attacks into it and uh, the attacking Pokemon is now poisoned. So same as the tool. The attack, 60 damage for a Psychic Colorless. Flip two coins for each hand. Discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. If both are tails, this attack fails. So I kind of I, I kind of like this. I think it's I think it's okay. You have to have good luck. I think. If you have bad rolling, then just yeah. stay away from the deck. If if you're up, it has 120 health, so it's all right. Again, we'd rather have 130 or 160, but it is what it is at this point. But you know, it's poison. There's other ways to boost the poison damage. I just I like this part right here. This part right here catches my eye. Flipping two coins. And then for each head, discarding an energy. Bye-bye DCE. Bye-bye grass on Glissopod. 
super good. I, I, I don't, I haven't thought of a way to fit it into a deck. I'm sure there's options, but I definitely think it has potential. Yep. It may. Um, well, you just have to have good luck when rolling the die. If so, you have good luck, and you just get both heads, and I think definitely go for the die. Well, see, that's the thing, is I'm thinking you don't actually have to hit two heads. I think if you just hit one, discard that DCE, discard the grass or whatever, or the metal off uh, Ultra Beast Necrozma, uh, I think it has potential. But we'll see. Hoopa. Hoopa. Okay. This is one of the ones that you're kind of high on, which I'm not. But you can maybe change my uh, opinion on it here. For one psychic, hy hyperspace ring, search your deck for two item cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. For one psychic, Cybolt, 10 damage, flip a coin if heads your op opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. So make me a believer of why this is good. All right. You're dead drawing. You have Hoopa active. Attach Psychic. And then you just get two item cards. Your Ultra Ball for the Tapalele. Then you're then just set up. Grab two Ultra Balls to so do two Tapaleles. One for Bridget, one for the uh, supporter for the next turn. And then I think it's going to help with just all the setup decks. If you're just trying to set up. And if you start with it, then that's great. It or Gumi would be a good starter. For a set of deck. We'll get into Gumi here in a little bit. But uh, as far as Hoopa, I see what you're saying. But I kind of, I guess I kind of feel like if I've already missed the uh, Bridget on turn one or like the uh, Lily Nest Ball engine, then I guess I'm feeling like I'm already kind of too far behind to use an attack, find two items, and what's to stop your opponent from hitting you with an in or disruption so I, i'm still on the fence i'm not a believer but uh it's definitely something we'll have to test and maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe you know i'm thinking that hoop is going to be too slow but you're thinking of it as more of kind of a savior if you're already struggling yeah <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just you saved your Man, a few words there, folks. Okay, so moving on to the next. Um, barbacle. I yeah. think it's too situational. It, you got to have seven cards in your hand. We've seen attacks like this, like the Omega, where you had to have four. And... and and that was a free attack. You know, this is a yeah. fighting and colorless to do 30 damage. Get hit by that. But get paralyzed. But have paralyzed. And paralyzed, you're going to see decks playing Dawn Wings now that Psychic's going to be more viable. You're going to see everyone's playing Guzma. So. And it's only 30 damage. In standard, you know, you don't. that's why you don't really see the Shock Locks do very well. And... The kind of milling and uh, lock decks are even playing like attacking style with the Hoopa. So I don't see the potential here. There could be. Get but, hit by that end, you're just done. Yeah, I, I, I don't like it. Maybe I'm not seeing something, but for now, it goes way on the back burner. Next, we have some new dinosaurs. Uh, Tyrant evolves from unidentified fossil, which is super good. So glad they changed the fossils. They are now viable. And you know what? There is a new Jurassic Park deck that won this past weekend at League Cup. And it is gaining all the hype. It runs the Rampados. And it looks crazy. Looks like a lot of fun. You evolve from the unidentified fossil, and you play order pad to grab the unidentified fossil. A lot of fun. 
So let's hop into Tyrantrum. Tyranno Heat. If you have the same amount or fewer Pokemon in play than your opponent, your attack does 60 more damage and it takes 30 less from attacks. Wow, that, that's pretty good. Fighting, fighting, colorless, crunch. 100 damage, discard 1 energy from your opponent's active. Fighting, fighting, colorless, discard 1 energy. And you could pair this with the Marowak for a free attack. Next thing you know, you're powering up Tyrantrum with two fighting because you can grab any energy out of your deck and attach it anyhow you like. Is it any or just basic? The, it's uh, it's uh, two basics that oh. you can grab out of your deck. I think this has potential. You're doing 100, and then if you have fewer Pokemon than your opponent, you're doing 60 more, so 160. Choice band, 190. And if you have any playing strong energy, that's 210. Or the Diancie. Or the Diancie, which we will get into in a little bit. I, de I like... I like Tyrantrum going forward. I think it's for you. It has the 160. Perfect. Well, 190. The resist takes 30 less. 30 but less. Even if you don't get that, it's still 160. My only concern is right there is the grass energy. Weakness. Well, just one shot the ghost pump before they attack you. Easier said than done, folks, but... Yep, yeah, uh, the grass weakness is a concern with how popular Glisspot Zorak is, and the uh, the and it's only gaining more popularity with the new Glisspot Lorantis that Connor Lavelle unleashed on everyone this past weekend. So you said run the Alolan Marowak, right? Was it? That's what I'm thinking. Run the uh, Marowak. Let me scroll back up real quick. Well, there's your counter to. Right. Glisspod. This, yep, there's your Glisspod Lorantis counter, and you can search for two basic energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. Put one on each of your Tyrants or one of each on your unidentified fossil. Seems pretty good. So, I like Tyrantrum going forward. Uh, the uh, the condition of the ability that you have the same amount or fewer so i think that's still easy to obtain because all the bridgets and stuff i think it is too i mean unless you're kind of playing empoleon your opponent's not gonna limit their bench to just two or three pokemon they're gonna get set up so they're gonna have at least four possibly five on their bench so, I don't think the condition is much of a concern, do you? No. I think you can still get it out there. It's so, good. we definitely like Tyrantrum going forward, right? Yep. Alright, let's move on. Wait, does it say before or after when it takes 30 less? Takes 30 less damage from attacks. So. Okay. Alright. So, Zygarde, don't apply weakness or resistance for damage. This Pokemon's tag. 30 plus damage if your opponent has any Ultra Beast in play. It does 30 more so of fighting. So. <clears throat> so, you're, most of the time they're going to have. It would be nice if this stacked for each Ultra yeah. Beast in play. It would do 30 more. Um, Is that how you're reading it? 30 plus, it does 30 damage, plus if your opponent has any, it does 30. So 60, 60 damage, uh, strong, you're doing 80, Diancie 100, Regirock 110. So you're one-shotting uh, Zark, GX, with all that uh, fun stuff in play along with it. Does it have a place as a one of non does does this replace the pseudo wudo? Definitely not. I don't think it does. Pseudos, it's pretty good. I think I would rather have watch and learn than this uh Zygarde. What do you think? Yeah, especially since it can't even one shot really anything. 
And Sooner Widow can just bring it up one shot there, but well right back. Or one shot anything, pretty much. Yeah, so. Then we have another Zygarde. Uh, double colorless, 20 damage, flip a coin. If heads, they're paralyzed. Fighting DCE, 60 plus damage. If you used your GX attack, it does 60 more. So 120. Would be possible. For fighting DCE, you know, nothing crazy on the damage output. You're weak to grass. You do have 130 HP, which is really good. Um, again, I don't see it replacing Pseudo Wudo. It takes, yeah, it's, it takes more just energies to do probably less damage than Pseudo Wudo. I can't think of one situation where I'd rather have Zygarde over watch and learn pseudo -wudo. I think the only situation is if they don't have a big attack and it's just like a poke for 50 to get a knockout and then you don't really have anything to get the knockout with it. Right. Next, Zygarde GX for DCE cell connector. 50 damage attached to Fighting energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. It does not specify basic fighting. So I'm assuming it could be two strong energies that made their way into the discard pile that you could attach to it. Is that how you're reading this? Yep. Just like the carbon break count. It would have the ability to do any energy. So already I'm really liking this. We're not going to be playing DCE. So we're already going to be Shoving it into the Buzzwall deck with Max Elixir. So, fits in super good. Now, does this replace your Carving Break? I was just about to ask that. I'm not sure if it does because uh, Carving, it has a lot of good functions. Uh, you know, it, it's good counter to the Mew, the Mew decks that are trying to hit Buzzwall for weakness. So, yeah. And this has weakness to grass. That is, that is a terrible weakness to have at this point in the game. Why can't it be just lightning or something? So, I. All right, let's 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 go on here. So fighting, fighting, colorless, colorless, one thirty. You can forget the colorless, colorless, because we're going to be attaching four fightings to this. Same here on the colorless, colorless. You're not going to be playing DCEs. 130 damage. So, GX attack, again, just assume four fighting. Judgment GX, 150 damage. During your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes no damage from attacks by your opponent's GX EX. So, it has kind of a immunity, sort of like uh, Necrozma <coughs> or uh, Don Wing's GX attack for 150, but. Don't concern yourself with that damage output. It's going to hit 210 easily with Strong Energy, Diancy, Choice Band. So don't get caught up that it's only 150 damage because there's way too many different ways of uh, and options to boost it. So don't get caught up in that. And then there's also Bonnie, which allows you to do two... GX attacks more than two, depending on how many you have. Right, right there, Bonnie. Bonnie. Discard a stadium and play during this turn. Your Zygarde GX may use his GX attack. So you, again, so you can theoretically stream Zygarde's GX attack if you would like to. Now, 200 HP awesome that is just that's amazing super super good because you know like we've talked about you know you want to hit at least 190 or 210 and he's right there in that middle point where he's just out of range of some of the non ex or gx attackers that will be uh covering have you noticed that just all the zygards the last zygard ex most of them had 180 HP. That was like the goal that you're going for. And then Zygarde came out and it had the plus 10 bonus. The 190, yep. yep. And, and now it has 200, yep. So, 
Um, does it replace the regular Zygarde? Um, I think it does. Potentially. I think it does replace the uh, old Zygarde. I like the attacks better. They, they, it costs more, but I, I think there's a lot of potential here. Um, does it replace Carbink? That I do not I know. know. But I can definitely see a one of in the um, Buzzwall decks. Now, I don't know if you could build a deck around him to where, like, what we talked about, streaming Bonnie to where you just use the GX attack every single turn. But I definitely, going forward, in a one of inclusion in the Buzzwall Lycanroc or the Buzzwall Garbodor decks. I, I I like it. Yeah, I agree. I do like it. I think you can just fit into those types of decks really well. Okay. Diancy. Wow. 120 health. Prism Star. Ability. Princess Fell. If this Pokemon is on your bench, your fighting Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Its attack... Three fighting energy, diamond rain, 90 damage, heal 30 from each of your bench Pokemon. Wow, folks. Let's just completely beef up and blow up the fighting Pokemon, the fighting decks. Let's just, you know, as if they didn't have enough stuff going on. Let's, put them on let's Yeah, let's just uh, soup them up even more. What the heck? You know, come on. We, we've already got Lycanroc GX that is insanely good. We've got Buzzwall that is just off the charts, dominating the meta game right now. Buzzwall wasn't looking up. <clears throat> yeah. We're giving it 20 more damage, okay? So, Jet Punch. 30, right? Strong Energy, 50. Wait, wait, wait. The new... Uh, Ultra Beast Energy. Ultra, 30 now. Ultra Beast Energy. So 30 and 30. So we're doing 60 with Jet Punch. We're doing 20 more with Diancy. So we're at 80. We're doing 10 more with Reggie Rock. So 110. No. 30, then 60, 70, 80. And then Choice Band. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> so let, hold on, hold on, hold on. So. It does 30. 30. We add Beast Energy, 30 more, so 60. 60. We add Diancy, so we're doing 80. Mm -hmm. Regirock, 90. Choice Band, 120. Yeah. 120 for one energy. Okay. And then hitting 30 on the bench. And this isn't even, and then hitting 30 on the bench. You know, this isn't even Glisspod where. It, it's a stage one, one grass attachment, but has to gust into the active. This is just, I'm going to be in the active. I'm going to use Brooklet Hill. I'm going to grab Diancy on turn one. I may play Bridget and get out Reggie Rock and all this other chaos. And You can't get uh, Bridget for Reggie Rock. I mean, Buzzwall is just as if it wasn't powerful enough. Now it's just going to be insane. You have got... That is why the Psychic deck and Malamar is going to be super crucial to counter all this craziness. You're going to see Mews and Mewtwo's in every single deck that's not already playing Psychic and that's trying to counter Buzzwall. Diancy is just super, super good. I... You have anything to add other than it's absolutely amazing? Good luck trying to beat the Buzzwall decks. So, we have a new Rock Rough. 70 HP. Better than the 60. Yeah. Surprise attack, 50 damage. Flip coin, if Tails does nothing. So, we're not going to be using it for its attack. The other attacks on the other Rock Roughs are better. But, 70 HP, I it could come in handy in... Uh, Buzzwall. In like mirror matches of Buzzwall Lycanroc decks, so not too shabby. Something you'd have to test and play around with. Then we have a Lycanroc 120, Stage One, Dangerous Rogue, 20 damage, 20 more for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, 
and then Accelerock, Hunter Damage, Fighting, Fighting Colors. I don't see this going into any fighting decks. I think you should just run the other Lycan Rock GX. Yeah, I just, I'm not you seeing it. You dangerous rogue. So, moving on. Evil Tall, we all wanted it to be good. Sorry to disappoint. He's not. Dark, Absorb Life, 20 damage, heal the same amount. So, Choice Band, you could do 50 and heal 50 off of him. Well, you know what? You only have 180. You're getting one shot. The only thing I do like about it, it has the resistance. So, all that means is your opponent's Diancy isn't going to work. So, not enough going for it. Uh, fighting resistance. Yeah, you still have 180, so. I'm sorry, but <clears throat> not enough uh, going on there for me to, to keep my interest there. Because, Lord. Wanna be prison yeah. star. Um, Sylveon. This is very, very interesting. For colorless wink, your opponent reveals their hand and you may discard a supporter card you... Fine there. If you do, use the effect of that supporter this turn. Seems pretty good. Magical shot. 40 damage for a fairy colorless. Why is a fairy yellow? I just don't want Now, uh, I'm sure Xander already has a thousand different ways to, in, to install this card into his current Sylveon deck. And... I think it's good. The Sylveon decks are already playing four Eevees and three Sylveon GX, so adding this as a one of seems pretty good. If you can hit red card and then hit him with this, okay, <coughs> that's pretty much when the Hoopa comes in pretty good. We are definitely on the same page right here. Hitting them with red card and then using this attack to, you know, you may hit their only supporter card. These Zorark decks that are built around Zorark are running, you know, maybe six supporters, maybe seven. So your chances of getting their only supporter card in a four card hand is pretty good. And then you would get to use that as your attack. So if you hit them with, uh, with Wink, after a red card, and their only supporter is Sycamore, and so you use their Sycamore and get you a fresh seven. Just don't have anything good in your hand when you do do the Sycamore. And they don't have any way to advance their board state. Then you pull up the other Sylveon and start Magical Ribbon. One retreat cost. Mm -hmm. I like it. it. I think it's a good card. I did. I. Like I said, I'm sure Xander has this crazy idea of how to use it, and I haven't thought enough about it, but just off the top of my head, fitting it as a one-of in the Sylveon deck seems pretty juicy. So, yeah. moving along here. I mean, it's definitely something to look for. Xerneas GX, yeah, I'm not feeling it. Colorless, 20 damage. Attack does 20 damage to one of your opponents, so it's 20 and 20, so well, worse than Buzzwall there. Fairy, fairy, colorless, 120 damage. Once again, we could knuckle impact for 160. Uh, Sanctuary GX, move all damage counters from each of your Pokemon to your opponent's active. That seems alright if you're against a spread deck or something. Um... You got the metal weakness. You're you're spending three to do one twenty. Just play Buzzwall. You're you only have a hundred and eighty. Uh, just play Gardevoir. Honestly. Or Buzzwall. So I, I just I, I'm not feeling it. Are you? No, you. I think you're scared. The next card. Uh, yeah. Okay, we can do that. Gumi. This is interesting. Uh, Dylan Bryan's favorite Pokemon here, Gumi. Ability, Sticky Membrane. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, the attack cost of your opponent's active Pokemon is colorless more. 
I like that. I think it would be good in Gardevoir because it's making them attach more energy. And that means you're going to do 30 more. And it slows them down. So you can set up your Gardevoirs even faster. I'll... You know, some people play the uh, Wobbuffet in the Gardevoir deck to kind of slow them down a little bit. I think... I think I like this better than the Wobbuffet. Yeah, the Wobbuffet yep. shuts off the trades. But you know what? They can't just attach DCE and go in hard with uh, Zorark. Yeah. They're, they're going to have to commit DCE and another Grass just to knock out a 40 HP Pokemon. Or even two DCEs. Or it forces them to Guzma. So, I like it. And it makes them attach more, which allows the Guard Wars to do even more damage. Exactly. So, um, will it go into every single deck? No. But, you know, this could fit into... Uh, a Garchomp deck too, since it's kind of slower and getting set up. Mm -hmm. I ain't definitely potential here. I, I can't think of the best way to use it. You're probably right on just sticking it in the Gardevoir decks. And he even has a fairy attack. Because you're already slow setting up. You're forcing your opponent to commit more energy. That's 30 more damage you're going to be doing just off his ability. I think it could definitely find a home in some Gardevoir decks. Yeah. So. And I mean, you could also go hard with the Gumi. Just choice band and start doing 40. Yeah. Seems not too good. But okay, <laughs> moving on. Um, here we go. Here it is. Ultra Necrozma GX. Psychic Metal, Photon Geyser, 20 plus damage. Discard all Psychic Energy from this Pokemon. It does 80 more for each Energy card discarded this way. So, Psychic Metal, and let's say you have your Ultra Beast Energy on. So right away you're doing 50 damage. Discard two Psychic, that's 210 right there. Let's throw a choice bin on him. 240, you're hitting Decidueye. Put on the new Ultra Beast energy. Yeah. Allows you to do 30 more. So, uh, Destructive Light GX for Psychic Metal. It can only be used if you have six or less total prizes between you and your opponent, and then you would place six damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. Not very exciting. I think I get why they did it. If they didn't put like six or less total prizes. Just think of you're against Gardevoir. You go first. You set up it. You pull it up. Goodbye roll. So you're just 60, 60, 60, 60. And they're just all gone. Yeah. You are weak to the fairy. So Gardevoir. But you can just one shot them back. You're not hitting anything. And think about all the energy they have to attach just to get the knockout. Because you're discarding all the psychic, you're just going to have the one. You're just going to have the metal or the beast energy on there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's super good immediately. We already profiled uh, Ultra Necrozma and Malamar. And I could definitely see Metagross. Ultra Necrozma decks being built. Yeah, because you can attach the metal or the psychic. We've already seen the Dust Main decks have uh, a lot of success in uh, tournament play. Not so much here, but over in Europe, they've uh, had some success built around the Metagross and Dust Main Necrozma. So, and Metagross already allows you to attach psychic or metal. From the discard to the active. So there's not going to be an energy issue. Three Metagross set up. Gets you your two Psychics. And your one Metal. So that's definitely one route you could explore. I like the Stage 1 Malamar. It's a little more consistent. You just have to play uh, Dawn Wings to gust him. But even the Metagross. He's, he would still have to be in the active. For Metagross to be effective. So... I really like this guy. I think he's going to be super awesome. And I would definitely expect to see new archetypes built around him. I think y'all should definitely try <coughs> Um, 
for sure pick up three of this guy. And, uh, yeah, I think he's going to be good. Um, whether, does he make my top two? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But, for now, super good. Let's move on. See what we got. There's a new Diggersby. Noibat is so disappointing that he is colorless. You know, we keep hoping for a Dragon Noibat. So that we can play double, so that we can attach double dragon to him. We keep hoping double dragon energy gets reprinted. Oh my gosh, if double dragon gets uh, reprinted, he's going to be pretty, pretty awesome. Just pretty like, awesome, but... I'm just kidding. I'm kidding because you have to discard the basic uh, psychic. So, uh, but we do want double dragon reprint um, and, and give us... Freaking give us a dragon Noibat already. Jeez. Come on, guys. All right. In, in a porter. Move a special energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon to another. Now, we kind of debated over this card. I think I would rather just play Enhanced Hammer, but uh, you have a different theory on it. So, what you got? I think if you can, if they have all four of their DCs in play. Switch it all to one Pokemon, and then... But you can only switch one. Yeah. At a time. You gotta play all three of them. So we're gonna have... So, first of all, they're gonna have all four DCs in play. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna somehow draw into three Inaporters. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Much. And then you're gonna Toad Lock them. So we're playing Expanded now. Yep. Okay. I... I think I'd rather just play Enhanced Hammer and get it to the discard. I see what you're saying. There's, and then they can't puzzle the time. Yeah, that, that's your most valid argument for this is it eliminates their ability to just grab them with double puzzle, reattach. You know, moving it to, um, you know, if what are you going to, if it fits Glissopod, Zorark, what are you going to move the DC to? You, you can't move it to Lele. Are you going to move it to another Zark? Yeah, I, mean, I guess you could load them up all on one Zark. Yeah. But, I don't know. I, I'm on the fence, folks, whether Enhanced Hammer or this is better. But, we shall see. Alright, moving next to Fossil Excavation Map. Um, it doesn't seem that good. Search your deck or discard pile to get back in a... Identified fossil card. Show it to your opponent. Put it in your hand. Um, yeah. I guess you could get back your un unidentified fossils it's and put them back into play. But rescue stretcher. It's, like yeah, it's rescue stretcher for, for your unidentified fossil. Now, unidentified fossil, I guess we're getting a reprint here. Uh, you can play it down as a 60 HP basic Pokemon. And you can discard it any time from play. So it's kind of like Robo Sub, yeah. where you can discard it. It doesn't say that they take a, a prize if you do discard it from play. So I'm assuming that they wouldn't. No, I don't think they would. I think maybe if they knock it out, though. Because, like, what was that electric card where you can uh, discard it and then reattach, but they still take a prize? Like the Raikou. Electro? Yeah, Electrode or something. Where you discard it and you attach it and it's like a special energy. It's like two lightning energies. And then you can just enhance them right away. But they would get a, a prize for you discarding it. So I don't think they would get a prize if you discard it. So No, I don't think so. So I think it's more like Robo. I have not played around with it. But like I said, the, the new Jurassic Park deck is built around it. And... The new Tyrantrum is going to be built around it, so definitely pick up four of this. Um, They're probably going to be cheap, though. Fossils are now playable. In that uh, Jurassic Park deck, it plays four of the uh, Talon Flames, and uh, to that way you can just uh, use its first attack to get anything you want. And so you should be able to streamline Rare Candy, Tyrantrum, Unidentified po Fossil. Definitely pick up four of it. It's going to be good. It's going forward. Fossils 
are now going to be playable. Now that you don't have to search through the bottom seven cards of your deck. Yeah, that was complete garbage, and so I'm glad they realized, you know, no one's playing the cards because it's garbage, so let's fix it, and I think they've done a terrific job. This is definitely a step in the right direction. Unidentified Fossil, gonna be good. It is good. Uh, we haven't fully explored its potential yet. We are just now, like I said, just this past weekend, um... It's seeing some really good results in the uh, local cups, so definitely pick up four of it. A couple reprints, Rare Candy, Ultra Ball, Switch, Pokemon Catcher, Mystery Treasure. Here we go. Discard a card from your hand in order to play it. Search your deck for a Psychic or Dragon Pokemon. It says N, but that should be a D. It's Dragon Pokemon. It is not... See, you can see the dragon symbol right there. I told you it was I good. don't know what they're trying to pull our leg with by saying it's an N. But uh, search for a psychic or dragon Pokemon. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. This is going to dump energy into the discard for our Malamar. We can grab our Malamar. We can grab our Ultra Beast Necrozma. We can grab our Dawn Wings. Anything. Super good. Lots of versatility with it. Getting energy into the discard. We're deck thinning. To affect someone. Excellent. Uh, at least a two, somewhere between two or four of, and probably most psychic decks. I think even if it was a normal, then I think it would still be good. It would be good in the expanded, so you could grab Shaman or the Tapalele. Absolutely. So, lots of value there. Go ahead and pick up. Go ahead and pick up four, but I think uh, Psychic decks will run between probably two or three of them. So, so. lovely Choice Band reprint. Choice Band reprint. Which I'm super glad about that. Then we it. have Lady. Search your deck for four basic energy cards. Reveal them, put them in your hands, shuffle your deck. As soon as we saw this, we immediately think, there's our Dustman Necrozma. Yeah. The problem... With the Dustmane Necrozma decks, is the draw engine or the searching for energy engine? So, do you go the Professor Letter route or do you go Octillery? Do you go Orangaroo or Starmie. or Starmy to use the ability to get back along with Mount Coronet? This solves all that problems. I've always said that with that deck. Once you see four metal energy, whether it's in your hand, discard, or in play, you are good to go the entire game. So hitting that magic number of four metals is going to be super good. Definitely see one, maybe two, maybe a two of in the Dustmane Necrozma decks. Um, what, what are your thoughts? I definitely think it's good, and I think it's going to be a great addition to the Dustman Magnezone's deck. And I think it's better than Fisherman. I don't really like Fisherman that much. I think getting the energies out of the deck into your hand is a better way than just out of the discard pile. Because early game, you're going to struggle to do that. So that's, that, that's what we found. You can get the turn two Magnezone. But then your hand is very limited to maybe two to three cards. And so at that point, Rangaroo can't get you into the metal you need to uh, really exploit the ability. Even Abyssal Hand gets you two more. It's still not getting you into the metal energy you need. But if you can set up and then turn to play Lady, get those four energies... You're good to go the rest of the game. That's all you really need. Um, I really like her in the Magnezone deck. And like you said, she's way better than Fisherman. Because um, if it you're going aggressive on turn two, how many times are you going to have four medals into the discard already to where you can really use the <coughs> Fisherman? You're pretty much not. You just not going to. So. If you have energy in the discard. Absolutely. Lady's good. Don't play Fisherman in your Magnezone Dustmane deck. Next is Diantha. You can only play this card 
if one of your fairy Pokemon was knocked out. Choose two cards from the discard pile and put them in your hand. So we have teammates for fairy specific decks. So Gardevoir will be loving this. As long as the two cards that they need are in the discard pile. Yep. So if they already have rare candy in the discard and they have a Gardevoir in their hand, so they can grab rare candy and then grab something else. And then something else useful. Um are are you playing this in Gardevoir or or do you think uh we know teammates is super good in the expanded Gardevoir decks. So does this have a a spot in your Gardevoir deck list or not? I think it does. It's kind of like a puzzle of time that you can just play very situationally. And I think the concerning part is you have to have it in hand and you can't really recycle it. But, I mean, I think it's worth it, especially if, since you're running three Tapaleles. You can Tapalele search it out and then get it into your hand whenever you need it and play it. I th so, you think maybe a, a two of or just a one of? What are, what are you kind of thinking? I think a two of. Just because of how slow Gardevoir can set up sometimes. Yeah. And it's kind of like Mallow, but for the discard pile. Wait, no. You could always get back your Gumi, and if you need to stall for a little bit more time or something. So. I think it's more of a. I think it's something you need to. Time. I think you need to test around with it, but I think, I think it, I think there's value there. Yeah. So we have not tested Diantha in Gardevoir yet. But definitely, definitely worth some testing. Worth a look for sure. Next we have Judge. It's the same as the old Judge. Both players shuffle their hands into their deck and drop four. Now, we don't know for sure if N is getting a reprint. At this time, we're going to assume that it's not. And so this will be the disruption of choice going forward. Or... Do we just eliminate disruption altogether and just go heavy for Cynthia? And four sycamores. And so four sycamores and just forget. And maybe just a one or two of Judge. What are, you, what are you thinking? I think Judge can be just in certain decks. Just depends on how many you play. But very aggressive decks, no Judge. But setup decks will probably run Judge and like setups with artillery and stuff so once you get four then you can play a couple and then get five more but I think Sylveon would be the best option with Judge so since it's kind of like a red card you can hit him with the Sylveon Judge combo and then use the non -E or non GX Sylveon mm -hmm. and eliminate so you could kind of use it as like your sixth or possibly seventh red card yeah so I think maybe not in every deck but some decks I mean, you gotta have some sort of disruption and would I rather play red card instead of judge in my deck I don't know I think it depends on the deck I I don't know where we go from here with Judge. It's something that is going to take a lot of testing to see. You have to have some sort of disruption. You can't just let your your uh, big opponent, wheel big wheel for 10, or your algorithm that grabs any five cards. I mean, you can't allow these shenanigans Sylvia. So or magical ribbons. You, you have to have some sort of answer. Now, is Judge... The best option? I don't know. I don't know if you play Judge over Red Card. I mean, because remember, that disrupts your own hand to where you only draw four. So if you're not even fully set up, say you go turn one and you bridge it, and your only other supporter is Judge or Sycamore. Judge and Sycamore, and then they, your opponent goes next, and they magical ribbon. Are you gonna judge and risk dead drawing and not advancing your board state, or do you 
just go ahead and sycamore. So do you have the Sylveon, which allows you to copy the, uh, the supporter? No, your opponent just oh. uh, did uh, Magical Ribbon on turn turn one, but they went second. So are you going to disrupt their Magical Ribbon, or are you going to draw seven? Because you're also disrupting yourself to just four cards, and you're not advancing your board state at all. I just... I don't know if Judge is the best option. It's going to take a lot of testing. So let, let's not carry on too much on this card because we don't know for sure yet if N's getting a rim print. Hopefully it does. Next up is uh, Lysander Prism Star. Now, I think it's pretty good. I like it. I like it. And if you hate Night March, you're going to love this card. Yes. So cut your Oricoro, cut your Toad Karen. Just play Lysander Prism Star and just laugh at the Night March player. Okay, because you know what? You're going to be, for each of your fire Pokemon in play, put the same number of cards from your opponent's discard pile into their loss zone. So, Skyfield, all your fire Pokemon. Yeah. Or even the Zorark decks that are using the eggs and and uh, maybe their DCs are in the discard and they're just using puzzles over and over. You know what? Screw that. I'm playing Lysander's Prism Star. I'm going to remove everything of value out of the discard. No more uh, Hex chaining. No more Getz's chaining. You know what? I'm just going to play my Prism Star and keep you from doing that crap. I like it. And Volcanion, you know, this, this deck, what was its biggest issue is Hex chain. Hex chain just killed Volcanion. Well, you know what? Get rid it, of their hex. It it forces them to VS Seeker the hex out of the discard if they think you play this. And when they VS Seeker the hex back into hand, then you may disrupt them or somehow Hit with, the with an in or red card. And then that hex goes away. So I definitely think it has a, a one up spot in the deck for Volcanion, for Turtonator, for Blacksmith decks, for Ho-Oh. I like it. It's good stuff. Yeah. Standard, not so much. Yeah. But definitely expanded. Absolutely. Bring it on. Next is Bonnie. We touched on her quickly with the Zygarde. It allows him to uh, use another GX attack. You just have to discard the stadium and play. I, I think if you were going to go this route, you would have a deck already built around the Zygarde. And at that point, I think I'd rather just play Buzzwall. Yeah, I think if you have the Buzzwall with the one of Zygarde, Bonnie isn't worth it to run. Just Absorption and GX, I think it's better. It, yeah, I, it's, it's one energy less. Um, you're getting the one shot, so you do absorb, and then next turn, knuckle impact if it doesn't get knocked out. So, I don't, I don't, no, nah, I think you'd have to have a deck completely built around Zygarde GX, and yeah. like we said, Buzzwall's just better. So, I don't think Bonnie's that good. I don't either. Uh, Lily, um, we, we know what Lily does. Uh, you can go one of two routes. You can either go the Bridget route or you can go the turn one Lily route. It just depends on the deck. Uh, so, and, and personal preference. I mean, there's, you, Baloo's the easiest example. Some people like the turn one Lily to help your setup. Other people like a more traditional Bridget. Um, oh. Lily's going to be super important. And along with Nest Ball, whenever Bridget rotates. So you are going to see uh, a transition into where instead of a turn one Bridget, you will see a turn one Lily. And they'll just compensate it with nest balls and stuff like that. So we'll just have to tweak our decks a little bit. But for right now, let's just uh, move on to Lysander Labs. Pokemon and tools have no effect. So no choice ban. No psychic memories, no electric memories, none of that shenanigans with Savali. Um, what what are your thoughts on this? Um, it's kind of like the Uvatol with Pitch Black Spear. 
with the ability to shut off items and that one was pretty good but I think it was good because it also had a good attack to do the 60 and 60. Mm. So no float stone, so no free retreating. I think it could be pretty good. Um, uh, Floatstone rotate. Uh, as of right now, Floatstone has not had a reprint. So, if Floatstone rotates out, then all you're really shutting off is choice band because people are gonna run a skateboard. Uh, Mahone's favorite card, a skateboard, skateboard, and uh, I just I don't see a lot of use here. I know where you're going with the. They don't have effects of tools like the Evil Tall. Uh, I'm not seeing the value here. And it can just hurt yourself quite a lot. Yeah, so I think there's other stadiums I'd rather play. If I'm playing Buzzwall, definitely Brooklyn Hill. Yeah. Um, Parallel City is much more disruptive. If you're wanting to, you know, just disrupt their tools, why not just play Field Blower or the Parallel City to limit their bench? I, there's better options just, than, just play field board. than labs. So next we have DCE, nice little reprint. Unit energy. Provides fairy dark and fighting. I like this combination. I just wish we actually had some better dark uh, attackers. Attackers and I am not referring to Evil Tall GX as being the attacker I'm Considering, and uh, you can run up. You have a tall Xerneas deck. We can use both of them at the same time. Right. And I'm just. I'm not seeing any combo with the uh, fire, uh, fairy and fighting, or the fighting and dark. I, I'm. I'm not if really we, thinking of uh, what Pokemon. You could build a deck around around those two uh, archetypes. I think if we had more fairy and dark Pokemon that were good and playable, then it would be a pretty good deck to have unit energy in. Yeah. We have fighting Pokemon, that, that's for sure. But the other two, yeah, slacking. I have to agree. I'm not. I'm not enthusiastic about this energy I, th I like the psychic lightning I think I think that just the the psychic unit energy is much better of the three mm -hmm. I would have to say then we have just the full arts uh, Greninja evil tall Zygarde Ooh. Xerneas that I like the artwork on Xerneas I like the ultra necrozma GX so that's pretty cool about the Fuller supporters. And we have Lady, we have Diantha Bonnie. You can't even tell what's going on until the Secret Evitals. Rares, Greninja, Evil Tall, Zagard, Xerneas, Ultra Necrozma. Then for our secret rare items, Importer, Mystery Treasure. I think the Mystery Treasure is the better one out of those. Definitely. Definitely the mystery. Then we have the unit energy. And then let's uh we didn't touch on it because I'm not seeing it on Poke Beach website so let's uh, let's go over here super quick and uh, um, Where are we what going? was it forbidden light TCG because for whatever reason it's not showing up the uh, there we go beast energy this card provides colorless energy. While this card is attached to an Ultra Beast, it provides every type of energy, but provides only one energy at a time. The attacks of the Ultra Beast this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Wow. I think it's in my top three. Yeah, because this immediately plugs into every single Beast deck. Every single Beast deck is going to run one of these. Can you think of one that will not be running one of these? Is there a reason not to run one of these? Um. Exactly. Yeah. Um is the correct answer. There is no reason not to play one of these if you are playing an Ultra Beast. Oh, I found the only reason. You don't have one. There you go. So, 
Buzzwall, Ultra Beast Necrozma. I mean, well, those are going to be the two main main ones off the top of my head. Um, super Don't good. <laughs> so, kind of looking back, um, it's it's in the top three for you. Yeah, I think it, Diancie, and then oh, what was it? it Diancie. Uh, let me think about it. You you say your three. Okay, I think Ultra Beast Energy for sure. And then Malamar. Um, oh, you're killing me. What? You are killing me, kid. What are you doing? Because there it is. All right. So, anywho, Ultra Beast Energy is in the top three. Mm -hmm. Then I have to go Malamar, Malamar in the top three. And then... Do you think Diancie or the Ultra Beast? I think Diancie. It's got a super good attack. Heal 30... Damage from each of your bench Pokemon. It's just, it's sad that we can't do the 20 on it, so to hit for 110. And then, so, I think Diancy, Ultra Beast, and Malamar. And then, if I had to give two more, definitely Ultra Beast Necrozma. Yep. And then, one that you're not expecting is the Marowak. Hmm. You're gonna think I'm crazy, but yep. Which I am a little crazy, but been known to do that. You know, I th I think it has a spot in the top five. I I could be completely nuts, but I think it definitely has a spot. I think it has a lot of potential. Another one I think has a lot of potential is the Executor, no, which you really think I'm crazy for that. But just trying to get energies in the discard. Do you think it's worth it just to run the forbidden treasure <coughs> just to discard the energies? Uh, could be. And I think Volcanion, Shining Volcanion, yeah. or uh, Volcanion Prism Star, sorry. Not Shining. But yeah, Malamar, Beast Energy, Diancy, Ultra Beast Necrozma. Then you know, I think, Gumi, yeah. I, I think it's in the top 10 too. I, it's crazy as that sounds. Um, I think Sylveon, Gumi, uh, Necrozma. Um, yeah, the Sylveon. If you just really hate Night March, then Lysander Prism Star. So, um, Diancy. I ain't nothing. There's a lot of good things in this set. There is. There's. I can only see one new archetype with the. Uh, and it's not really new. It's just uh, archetypes built around Malamar. So I don't know if you want to lump those all into one category. Uh, the new psychic decks um, that are going to kind of branch out from this Malamar. I mean. You can lump the Ultra Necrozma. You can lump the Mewtwo GX is going to be viable. Lanala is going to be viable. Garatina Prism Star is going to be viable. So, I mean, I think he opens the possibilities for a lot of decks. And you are going to need this type right here. If you want to have any sort of chance against... The absolute insane numbers that the fighting decks are going to be putting up. You are going to be all about this right here. This psychic. This purple card. You're going to be wanting to play Buzzwall. Or you're wanting to play something purple to counter Buzzwall. So. Ending notes. This set. Pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, Diancy, Malamar, Ultra Beast, Necrozma. Uh, Beast Energy, all going to be super good. I think they immediately come into decks already existing, and I think you're going to see a uh, kind of a flood of new psychic decks. So, yeah.
Final thoughts? Have fun. Go crazy with the new set. So, till then, be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes.